push cards and what's on TV ads and radio ads. You have to look at the voting records of these people. You have to look at what they said they were going to do if you would just trust them and then look at what they produced. And I'm going to say again, I hope you see now why it is so important for us to hold the line at the local level. We cannot afford in Smith County to give local property taxes and sales taxes to the state of Texas to finish Toll 49. We can't afford it. Because you know what? About 60% or more, I don't know because there's not, I can't get any statistics on this from the county. But last time I was keeping the statistics, about 60% of the county roads were rated bad and poor. We have county roads, miles of county roads, and, and I'm going to tell you how, how many miles we've got. If you picture the courthouse downtown, and you connected the center line of every county road together, and you stretched them out end to end, they would stretch from the courthouse downtown to Buffalo, New York. That's how many miles. So if you think about the businesses and the people, that live on those county roads that need a road widened for safety purposes or completely resurfaced because now that road is a major artery. The question is, when is that going to be a priority? The priority of county government is to take care of county business, not to siphon our money off and give it to the state so that they can keep doing some of this stuff. I'm going to tell you, there are a lot of special interests in town. Some of them, I'm sure I agree with them on some points. And they're going to be twisting arms for this. But I'm going to tell you, it's going to be a campaign issue. People running for county government, this is going to be a campaign issue, period, for Grassroots America. All right, questions. And if I don't know the answer, I won't make up the answer. I will try to find it for you. This is a two-part question. Is Kevin L. Tyfe supporting Amendment 6? Where is all the money coming from backing this amendment? Um, well, the money is, uh, yes, Kevin's on record. Senator L. Tyfe is on record supporting it. Um, and the money is coming from a variety of PACs. Uh, if you go to the Prop 6 uh, um, information, you can do a Google search on that, and you can find it. It's a, a group of the Realtors PAC. There are some contractors, and you know, there are people that are going to benefit from it. You know, and isn't that the American way? We try to twist arms and get something on the ballot that we're going to take, you know, that we're going to benefit from. But I'm going to tell you, it's not a question of whether we need a water plan. We need a water plan, but we need the right plan. We need a plan that's got statutory limitations on it so that we don't fund ice skating rinks with this money. There are enough holes in that. And we asked during the session, and I will tell you, conservation is an important thing too. Rural property rights is an important issue in this. You don't want the big metro cities to be able to get the, the priorities, all the big water priorities, and here's rural. Texas sitting here having its water sucked off to fund the big cities that don't have any conservation plans. So if you go to our website, there are 12 reasons that we articulate. There's another website, uh, Independent Texans. Independent Texans is fighting this along with David Simpson, Van Taylor, some others, um, Terry Hall, and uh, Rush Roots America has joined that coalition. So I'm just saying, y'all need to be up to speed on it. There's a right way to do things and an absolutely wrong way, and, and taking this money out of the rainy day fund is the wrong thing. Yes, Patty? Can we see today's screens on an email? Um, well, it's, it's going to be hard to email that. I, a I think I, we could email a link, 
that links it back to the website. So I'll try to get it posted as a PDF on the website. There's a bunch of them on Twitter at Political Brew. And Bob says he's got them. Okay. What is the local debt per capita? I can't remember all of the numbers. Um, $8,744 a person, local debt per person in Texas. And a lot of ballots, there are a lot, lot, lot of issues on ballots across the in state. The what, in the county? I, I, don't, I don't have that. You can find it on the county website. Now that will include, though, you've got to include the school district that you live in, which is going to be a majority of that debt, the school district, particularly if you live in Tyler ISD. It'll be made, and the city of Tyler has no uh, general obligation debt. It has some revenue bonds, but it doesn't have any general obligation debt. Will this presentation be posted on our website? Yes. As you define core constitutional functions, veterans and service members do not appear. So it's common sense to dismantle all Texas veteran seniors ser services. Given the gaps in federal systems and 200,000 veterans coming home to Texas, where do you see them getting the care and support they need and what about their families? Well, I, I certainly anybody that knows me knows that I'm not talking about gutting veterans programs. I'm just saying that veterans, that, and there needs to be a cohesive, a better working relationship between the federal government and state government and local government where veteran services are, there's a lot that can be done there to improve that. And I'd be happy to talk to you about some of those things. But I didn't find anywhere in the state constitution where there was ever authorized, but I will tell you this, we have authorized over and over tax breaks for veterans, which I wholeheartedly support that. And here's why I do. Because the federal government does such a rotten job of taking care of veterans, we need to take care of that. So let me just clarify that point here. Nobody leave this building today saying that Joanne Fleming doesn't support veterans. Okay? We'll make that really clear. I'm talking about the waste that's up there. I certainly don't believe that veterans are a waste. I'm going to tell you, if there's anything that we need to get right, it's supporting veterans. And the only reason that I run around on your dime and on my husband's dime to do this for free is because I am doing it to honor what, what veterans have given us, and that's liberty. Somebody's got to run around and try to advance and preserve that liberty, and I'm just blessed to be a part of a group of people who do that. So thank you. Can we do anything about unfunded mandates? Are you talking about local unfunded mandates? Uh, well, okay, well, I'll tell you what. First of all, you need to have clarification that it's actually an unfunded mandate. Because there's, little, there's this little shell game that different levels of government play on each other. You know, it's kind of like we point down the road and go, there's nothing to see here. Uh, we've cut everything we can cut. There's no fat in our budget. But up here, down the road here, that's where you need to go. And then they'll say, oh, we got all these unfunded mandates. Now, do we have some unfunded mandates? We do. And how do we, how do we stop those? Well, we pay attention sometimes to what our local people are asking for. Because I'm going to tell you, there's a group of people that think the function of a state representative or a state senator is to be Santa Claus and bring some goodies back home. All right? So now I'm going to ask you, if your state representative and your state senator um, just say explode that around the state to include 254 counties, if everybody has that mindset 
and you're asking them to go, you know, pass these special bills and get this special stuff for you funding because you're not willing to raise taxes locally to do it. You're not willing to put the project on a, on a ballot so that the people can say yes or no. But you'll you'll get your state representative or your state senator to pass a bill to pick the pockets of people in Lubbock and Abilene and Odessa and Wichita I mean, and Waxahachie and all over the state because you don't want to pay for it here. Okay, so if you're on the Santa Claus side of government, then the state feels absolutely entitled to send you some of its responsibilities called horse trading. That's how it goes. So that's why TxDOT feels empowered to go to cities and counties and say, guess what? We need to save money. The legislature told us we need to save money. So guess what? You get to maintain the state highway that, that comes into your city or your county. And they call that saving money. So how do you get rid of unfunded mandates? We have a clear understanding of what the core statutory responsibility is for every level of government. And you watchdog them, and you spend time asking questions, and you just tell them, quit asking for the goodies. Tell us how much government costs here. Show us you're doing a good job of what you've got, and convince us we need to give you more. And quit asking government to do stuff that shouldn't be doing. I'm going to tell you that is one of the things that annoyed the daylights out of me when I was an elected official is the number of people, you would not believe the number of people that call you asking you to do stuff that government should never be doing. Settling disputes between neighbors and all such things like that. So, yeah, we, we, we get rid of unfunded mandates by having each level of government stay in its own function and knowing how much that costs and doing it as effectively and efficiently as possible. Is anyone running against Bob Dool? If so, who? <laughs> yes, Bob Hall. <coughs> Bob Hall from the Canton Tea Party is running against him, and I don't know if anybody else um, is gonna file or not. The filing period opens November 9th and closes December 9th. This comment comes from our audience, and I believe it sums everything up well. We say hip hip hooray to Joanne. <laughs> okay, so now um, I think that uh, if you guys have any folks in Arlington, the next stop of the Life, Liberty, and Property Tour is in Arlington this week. Monday, Arlington. Tuesday, Granbury. Uh, Wednesday, Stephenville. Saturday is Waxahachie. And I think Monday, the 11th, I'm in Canton. So for anybody that's got friends in those areas, uh, ask them to look up the Life, Liberty, and Property Tour and see if we're going to be there because um, I'm on stage with some really great people. Uh, Jim and Elizabeth Graham from Texas Right to Life, um, people from Texas Eagle Forum, Michael Quinn Sullivan and Dustin Matoka from Texans for Fiscal Responsibility, and Tim, um, what's Tim? Tim Lambert from Texas Homeschool Coalition. Anyway, a bunch of us radical conservatives uh, blowing into town. Um, particularly in districts where the House member or the, the State House or Senate uh, incumbent needs to be challenged. So we're going into those areas to try to stir up trouble. Yes, we are. And we're having really good crowd. So anyway, guys, um, we're going to need help with the tables, putting those away. Did I have any candidates that came through the door late? If you came through the door late uh -oh. and you want to introduce yourself, you need to get yourself right on up here, El Quico, Matt Schaefer, and, <laughs> <laughs> and introduce yourself as Matt Schaefer. Don't be somebody else today. Bobby Bobby? Bobby? <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Matt Schaefer, uh, candidate for your uh, representative in the House of Representatives down in Austin, District 6, which is uh, Tyler, uh, White House, uh, Chapel Hill, Bullard, Flint Gresham, and all those folks out in Emerald Bay as well. Thank you, Matt. And I'm John Jarvis. I'm a candidate for the 321st Judicial Court. It's the Family Law Court here in Smith County. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you all so much. Uh, it's time. Now look, I put some more flyers back here on the table for the December 6th Champions of Freedom event. And I'm going to tell y'all, there's a possibility that we may have Matt Kibbe from Freedom Works may join us. Uh, Matt and Whitney are going to be in Texas, so I've asked them to be our, um, be our guest. So those seats are filling up really quickly and that thing is fixing to fly statewide. So if y'all been holding out to get your tickets, you might want to go ahead. Tomorrow's forum? Oh yes. Tomorrow's candidate forum for U.S. Senate. Um, out at UT Tyler Ornellis Center, the doors open at 2, the event starts at 2.30. And the uh, panelist will be Dardine Radel. Is Dardine still here, yep. Dardine? Darty and uh, Bob Hall will be sitting in for Michael Kinsey. So we will have candidates for U.S. Senate. Um, Mr. Barton will not be there yet because he's not declared yet. Okay? All right, so I want y'all to stand up and tell me who you are. Ready? One, two, three. We are the people! We are the people! We are the people! That's music to my ears. Y'all have a good Friday afternoon. Thank you so much.